So I've owned the Switch for a couple of years now. And for me, when I got it, it was a console that I definitely fell in love with. A lot of it came down to the Nintendo Magic with some of their fantastic first-party games. But as the years have progressed, and we're seeing that the Switch has survived through two different console generations, from the PS4 and the Xbox One to the PS5 and the series-style consoles, we're now starting to see that there's a lot more graphics technology out there that's kind of putting the Switch a little bit behind. Especially as well when you consider the fact that we now have devices like the Steam Deck hitting full force. So in this video, what I'm going to look at is the Nintendo Switch and really if it's worth buying in 2023 and the things that I really, really like about it and some of the things that I dislike about it. So we're going to get into that in just a moment here. To start off, the Switch when it came out, I thought looked like a cool little console. I still maintain that same feeling that I had when it debuted. I think the aesthetics of it, they're, they're functional, it looks good, it doesn't look too bulky, I think it looks just perfect and has that Nintendo styling that you'd expect. I like the way that it's able to move from being not just docked but also portable, so you can work this at home as well as on the go. And I like the way it's all set up, I think it's pretty simple, I like that I just drop it into the dock, it works on my TV, there's not really much know-how or finicking around that way. Um, I also like the actual controls. Now, I know some people have had issues with the Joy-Con when it first came out. I, so far, I've had this since 2019. I, so far, have not experienced any of those issues with the joysticks. I'm still using the original ones that came with my Switch. And I like the way the controller feels. I like the way it feels portable. I also like the way it feels in the actual docked controller that you can use at home. Now, it is a little small, don't get me wrong, but for the most part, it meets all my needs when I'm playing most of the games on the Switch. I also want to mention that I have a generation of the Nintendo Switch where they upgraded the battery. I believe the original generation of the Switch, you had like a two hour battery life. This one, it seems to be that I get about six to seven hours, which is very useful because I use this when I do travel for work, so I do enjoy that. I also like that the operating system from Nintendo is pretty straightforward, it's simple. There's not a whole lot of specialties to it, doesn't seem confusing or overwhelming like even the Xbox OS can sometimes feel like. I think it's just very straightforward, so overall, I like it. The thing I dislike about the Switch out of the box, however, and I don't think Nintendo's really remedied this even with their OLED model, and definitely didn't remedy this with their light model. Um, the storage space is pretty small. You get like 32 gigabytes out of the gate, which at the time when the Switch came out, I don't believe it was as big of an issue, but the more that things have moved into digital and digital gaming, this is something that it just feels really small for the amount of games and the size that games are nowadays when it comes to getting those for your Switch. And I definitely had to get a 64 gigabyte card to expand the storage of my Switch. While it wasn't majorly expensive, it is kind of annoying that I had to do that after the fact. This should almost be a standard that you get more space out of the box considering the climate we're in with gaming. Now, when it actually does come to the games though, the main reason that I wanted the Switch and that anyone probably even wants to Switch at this junction really are the Nintendo games. There's some fantastic games on the Switch. I, I absolutely love the Zeldas on the Switch and I'm really, really looking forward to Tears of the Kingdom. I really liked the Mario games on the Switch. I had Smash Bros at one point. Those are all to me, those are top tier, like excellent, excellent games that you can't get anywhere else but the Switch. I also liked for a while there, you were seeing a lot of older 360 games being ported to the Switch. Now, while I'm not ultra interested in playing those at home with this docked, I did like that I could take my Switch on the go and play a game like Bioshock, for example, which I was recently playing on my trip to Mexico this year. So for me, being able to relive some of those classes on the go was definitely appealing to me. That mixed with the first party games, the Switch has a fantastic library when it comes to that. 
I also like that Nintendo's moving forward heavily into emulating some of their older games. And we're starting to see more N64 games pop up. But you also have a pretty decent Super Nintendo library as well. And for me, I find that a big appeal that has me coming back to the Switch more often than not when I want to relive some of those retro games. So ultimately... You got a great little device at this point in 2023. You have great battery life. You have some great first party games and some cool classic 360 PS3 era ported games as well. As well as some great emulated games on there that, that seem to keep coming more and more as the year progresses or the years progress here. But what I'm going to get to though are some of the things that make the Switch or kind of detract from the Switch and really are something you should consider when it comes to purchasing a Switch, especially if you don't have any of the other main consoles. And this is a topic of contention for a lot of people, but the Switch is relatively underpowered graphically. Now, I know Nintendo's not ultra concerned with that, but what it's done at this point, especially in 2023, is it's led to a bit of a barrier on some of the other games that are out there on the multi-platform consoles and what i mean is i would really have loved to have seen even games like a call of duty making their way to the switch but when you have a console that's so underpowered it just it won't happen at this point and again i understand that's not nintendo's approach to gaming but when it comes down to the cost of a console now the switch still isn't cheap Neither is the Xbox, neither is the PS5, and chances are this is going to get worse as, you know, we continuously seem to have part shortages and all that stuff. So what I mean by that is, if you're going to have this as your main console, you might be disappointed, especially when it comes to multi-platform. And the few multi-platform that have made their way over to the Switch have been pretty unimpressive. They tried to pour Wolfenstein over, which the assets and everything look pretty good considering that it's on a heavily underpowered console, but the resolution simply just could not keep up, and it looks like you're playing with, like, Vaseline smeared on your screen. So, the reason I'm bringing this up is because if you're a huge Nintendo guy, you probably don't care about this, but... If you're somebody who's trying to settle on a single console between the big three with Nintendo, Sony, or Microsoft, you might find that this console is lacking that way because you're not going to get good multi-platform games hitting your console. You're going to be getting a lot of first-party games, and unfortunately, sometimes those games aren't coming out so often from Nintendo. Tears of the Kingdom feels like it's taken forever to come out at this point. Stuff like that, right? So, for me, it's hard to make it a main console. To me, the Switch, I look at it as my secondary to my Xbox. It's a console I pick up when there's a great exclusive that's just come out for the Switch, but otherwise, it may sit there for two or three months without really being touched, unless, of course, I'm traveling. The next thing to consider as well in 2023 is that there is a strong chance that I think the Switch has been out for for, for almost since 2017, if I'm not mistaken, so that's quite a number of years at this point. And it's probably going to be replaced soon. So what I mean by that is there's probably going to be an actual successor to the Switch from Nintendo coming out soon. Which means that if you're looking at buying the Switch, it may be worth waiting. Just for that reason alone. I know they released the OLED, but it wasn't really an evolution of the Switch. They just added a couple cool new features. And lastly... There are some good alternatives out there that are actually giving the Switch a run for its money. And if you're someone like me who does enjoy the multi-platform games, it might be worth considering something like the Steam Deck. I have buddies who are using the Steam Deck both at home and on the go, and they they have raving reviews about it. And for the most part, it, it produces pretty good graphics and runs most games really well. And you'll also have access to a library of newer generation games than you would on the Switch when it comes to multi-platform especially. And while I don't condone this, I'm even I'm understanding people are making pretty good headway on even being able to emulate some of the games on the Switch onto the Steam Deck. So you have other devices now that are starting to step up and take advantage of the fact that they have more um, hardware power to be able to produce and keep up with some of the modern gaming trends that are going on. But ultimately, to dial this back, if you're somebody who you understand these things and the Switch to you is more or less a console you want to play those Nintendo exclusives on, then 
I would say that if this is like a secondary console or you just want Nintendo games, you don't care about the other games that are out there, the Switch is a fantastic choice. But there is that looming issue of the fact that it's probably going to be replaced soon down the road. And when I say down the road, we're probably talking even by year's end, maybe next year, based off of the rumors that you read on the internet forums and websites and that sort of thing. So ultimately, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the Switch. I think it's a fantastic console, but in my circumstance where I own a Series X and I have a thousand other consoles, it seems like in my house, it's definitely a secondary console and a travel console. I use it a lot when I'm on, when I'm, when I'm on business trips and stuff like that. So with that being said, I think the Switch is worth it if you consider those caveats, and it might even be worth it at this point, considering buying a Switch used for a cheaper price, purely because of the fact that it may be replaced soon, and at least that way it's not going to hurt as much spending four or $500 on getting a Switch, or even consider if you really just want to play some of the games and don't care about playing it docked at home, consider getting something like the Switch Lite, which run relatively cheap at this junction so ultimately in 2023 i think there's a lot of risks to getting the nintendo switch but i also think there's a lot of benefits and it really depends on in my opinion getting it for a fair price at this point especially with some of the stuff on the horizon or maybe even skipping out entirely and waiting for a newer switch to come out or even considering some of the alternatives of multi-platform games like the like like the Call of Duties and stuff are a big deal to you and maybe even look into something like the Steam Deck.